Well, hey there, it's Sandy, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and this video is for the birds. Actually, the video is for bird lovers, not for the birds themselves, because they don't really care about stamps, do they? <laughs> but you might. These are new stamps from Colorado Craft Company. Thank you to Amy for sending them to me. But before I color those, and I'm going to color all three of them, I wanted to say another thank you to someone else, which is, okay, a lot of someone else's. <laughs> it's to my patrons over on Patreon. A bunch of absolutely fabulous people for whom I have spent a ton of work this week writing out envelopes and getting everything stamped. And now I'm doing the sealing. And yes, I am not licking envelopes just so nobody worries about that. When you get mail from me, you can open it. So I've washed my hands before I even started the process, but I wrote out over a hundred cards. And a whole bunch of them are going domestically, a whole bunch of them are going overseas as well because I have people around the world and I love you all and I just wanted to say that and say watch your mailboxes. Lots of you are going to be getting cards and I have a bunch of them that needed the extra postage and I have the group that is set for international as well as the uh, domestic ones. So yay for everything ready to go out in the mail. All right, now let's get on to the coloring because I know that's what you came here for, most likely. Although if you want to be one of those patrons, you can join. There's a link in the doobly-doo, always is, in case you want to maybe get a card from me once in a while. It's one of those things where you can put in a buck, you can put in five, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, whatever you want for a variety of rewards, including coupon codes for classes, and you get sneak peeks of things, and I show you other stuff, and I ask you questions, and I get your feedback. Yeah, my patrons are like my sounding board, and I love all of them for being such wonderful people. All right, on to the coloring. What I have done for each one of these, they have a floral element of some kind in them, and I made a background out of it using some no-line ink, and then I stamped in a Copic-friendly ink, which is my my normal, my jet black lawn fawn ink, and then started the coloring. I did this because I couldn't fit this bird's head and figure out how to get the flower and the bird's head onto an A2 size card, a regular size card. And <laughs> I know some of you have been wondering, like with these big and bold ones, how do you get them on a card? Okay, this is how it fits on a card. I figured instead of just showing it on a big old piece of paper, then I would show you on a card. I considered, since these are three beautiful birds, doing sort of a, a vintage looking, I don't know, bird scientific page kind of thing with all three birds on it and do little writing in it and doodle and all that. And I was really going to get crazy with it, but I didn't because I wanted to show you how to put them on a card. <laughs> now what I have done here is just pick some colors out based on a photo that I found on the interwebs. And for those who are always asking, well, how do you see the shading? How do you know what colors and all that? This is one of the best techniques I think that you can use to teach yourself how to see color, which is to find something to try to replicate in your stamp. You're not gonna be able to do it exactly because the stamp is not the same picture. But when you're looking for a way to match colors to something, practicing doing it by looking at something else is going to train your eye to see and I don't know how else to tell you to, to learn that skill because it's a really valuable one when you're trying to select colors. In this particular one, I saw all these colors in the feathers underneath kind of shining through. And then there was this dark sort of outlines for a bunch of the feathers and that defined some of the feather groupings. And I knew that I wanted to have all that, that dark outline match across the whole thing. Because when I looked at the bird, it wasn't like I saw a chunk of blue and a chunk of green. I saw all the colors mixing. So I put layers of all the colors underneath and then added the detail on top with the dark blue color. And that kind of pulls all of it together and I can add all the beautiful feather textures, but not have to figure out how to color all those colors on top of all that line work, just creating it. But in seeing which colors to choose, that is something that you need to train yourself 
to see. I know a lot of people come here and they're like, you know, I want to see the colors that you're putting on the screen. And yes, I put them on the screen for you most of the time. Not all the time, because it's a lot of work to do that. But if you can train yourself to start to look at a photograph and match the colors to it, I mean, there are dozens of different kinds of hummingbirds. That's a great stamp to work with. This, this little guy, this, this peacock is another one. There's a bunch of different colorations you can choose. And I just found one that had interesting markings on it that I wanted to, to put on my bird. And the, by the way, the little eyeglass thing sort of made me chuckle because monocles, and this is just like in my head from watching cartoons, I think a monocle is held in place between a person's cheek and their eyebrow. Like it's just like a thing that sits there. There's not, there might be something that holds it. I don't know. And I don't know if these are chains that hold, that are hanging down from it, or if that's a handle. And then the bird has to have like a hand to hold it. So there's a lot of unrealism. <laughs> I decided to put that in there as a monocle. But yeah, there's that. I, yeah. Just laugh at me. Laugh along with me, please. Because sometimes I make myself laugh when I do stuff. But I thought it would be kind of fun to add to this. Anyway, I am doing the same thing with this one as I did with the other bird. I'm just putting down a bunch of colors underneath that I'm going to add all that texture onto later. Now with the glass area, when you're coloring glasses, it's generally lighter colors than what is around it because you're seeing through a glass. So it's, it's going to warp both the shape and the lighting and the color and everything. So I went through after I put the color down and did some colorless blender over it to just lighten that area up. And then um, on this one, you need to add more of the bird's eye. On the hummingbird, I did do a little bit to it by adding some white, uh, white pen to it, but this one has an open space that you can fill in with whatever color eye you want. So again, I'm going to go through and add all of the little bird texture on here with my dark blue marker. Now when you're, when you're creating things like this and you're trying to figure out what to do with the feathers, the way that I think about making the lines for the feather textures is partially by, of course, looking at the picture. But in the picture, I'm looking for, if you can, you know, picture in your mind, if you were combing the feathers on the bird and running a comb through it, what direction would you do that? that should be the direction the lines go. And there are some areas where the feathers might turn a different direction because of the angle of the bird or whatever. And you can see that in the feathers. You can see the lines change. And you would change your color, your, your direction on your lines. You can also change the color on the lines. I'm using the dark blue right here, but I was starting to feel like if I started doing all of those dark blue lines in that big empty area with those light colors where the highlight is, it was going to be too dark and I wanted the lines to help me continue to round the image. So I switched to a lighter color so that I would car carry through more of the dimension. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. Sometimes I do these videos and I'm like, nobody's going to understand anything about what I'm saying because it kind of, a lot of this stuff would require an entire class to really get into the details. So these YouTube just feels like, a summary sometimes of the concepts. Now, one of the things I did right there was when I discovered what adding the gray to the beak did, I also grayed out some of that white highlight behind the glass. And that also made the white pop out more on the glass. And I was trying to figure out how to make it look more glass-like and just going over it with some gray marker didn't work. So I went through with my white pen and while it was wet, just mushed it with my finger a little bit to get some soft edges to it. And, you know, made some random shapes in there. There's not really a science to figuring out exactly how that should go in order to make it look like a glass, but there you go. And then there's these things on the top of the head that I found myself thinking, what on earth are they for? Is it just for show? Is it just so the peacock can show off that it's got this little thing on its head? Or do they have a purpose? Is there, do they like, like whack each other with those? I don't even know. I know nothing whatsoever <laughs> about peacocks. 
except how to color a card. So there you go. Now, on this one, I decided to show you first, if you're one of those people who likes to make really pale, soft flamingos, this is a color combination that you can use. But I, don't, I didn't find that to be particularly inspiring because it's kind of the same color as all of those feathers that I stamped in the background. It's the same overall hue and I wanted some contrast. You know me, I love contrast. So I added contrast and I jumped into a color that I think most people would be afraid of with flamingos because you think of them as pink. But if you Google flamingos and look for what colors flamingos come in, there are some that are like intense red, orange kinds of colors. And you can suggest that this is maybe just the shadows on him or that it is one of those dark colored ones. And I don't know whether it's just the lighting or whether flamingos actually come in those, but there's enough pictures of them out there that I think it's, I think it's worthwhile to try something like this. So I used a, a couple of pinks, uh, pinks and reds to do those basic colors. I saw in the picture almost some purplish on the shadow that was going across the white of the beak. So I used it. There's nothing wrong with using, just jumping in there with purple. It works just fine. And then I left a little highlight on the black part of the beak and colored that in with a, a medium gray so that it would knock that back. I didn't want a white highlight on there. But the rest of the bird was feeling not contrasty. <laughs> and as we know, Sandy likes contrast. So I went in there with some gray and then went over that with a slightly darker red. And it was just because the first red didn't feel dark enough, so why not add more dark red and then go back in with the lighter red and then go back in with some pink and just keep working at it until I had darkened all of it enough. But also leaving some of those nice highlights that I had, so I've got really nice contrast on the flamingo. So there is my quick three colorings of the birds. I hope you enjoyed this and got something out of it. The um, stamps are all, of course, over at Ellen Hudson, and she is having a 4th of July sale. There's details over on my blog about that if you want to find out what the sale is on, etc. And I am going to give away these three cards. So go over to my blog sometime this weekend and leave a comment over there. I ask for it on my blog just because then I can find you. I can email you and say, you won, give me your address because I'm in the mood to send cards out. So I'm going to send these three out next week to three lucky people. So that's about it. I will see you guys later. Have a safe weekend and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.